Welcome back to Trackside. I'm Carol Holden along with Sam Huff and very happy to have with us today our guest Steve Nevin. Steve is president of Altitude Simulation Technologies in Boulder, Colorado. Steve, thanks for joining us at Trackside. Oh, well, thanks very much for having me. Well, we're used to uh, pretty basic horse training techniques, you know, you jog, canter, gallop, sometimes go the wrong way, um, call in the vet if there's a problem, but you have something entirely different at least for horse racing that you're working on the altitude simulation technologies and i know this is used in in human training so can you give us a little background of your business and how you decided to get into the the horse racing part of it well sure um yeah, actually our business uh, ast is the animal division of colorado altitude training and our company has been around for almost 10 years now uh, focused on developing simulated altitude training systems for athletes, both human and animal, uh, and basically uh, trying to bring the benefits of altitude training uh, to everyone without, you know, unless you have a house in Vail, Colorado, um, you know, it's really tough to get the benefits of altitude conditioning, and, and we have the technology to bring that to just about everyone now. So, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years. In 2004, we recognized an opportunity in talking with some of our customers that uh, we could create uh, a simulated altitude environment in a horse stall. And uh, we wanted to do that because the major technology behind altitude training is what's called live high and train low. That's a training modality that was established back in 1997 by Jim Strake Gunderson and a number of researchers that realized that if a human athlete could live at altitude, or rest at altitude, and somehow transport themselves to do regular training at sea level, that would be the optimal conditioning and fitness combination. And indeed, today, uh, it's one of the drivers behind the success of our human systems. We have a number of professional and amateur athletes in all sports who are sleeping and resting in simulated altitude and then they go about their normal day, uh, you know, running and training and do what they do to prepare for their sport. With regard to equine, we realized we had a similar opportunity to introduce that training modality by converting the stall to capture simulated altitude so the horse could rest in the evening and then go about his normal directed training program during the day. And so that's what our system is all about. It's, uh, and, you know, since we've had publicity courtesy of shows like yours and the article in Steeplechase Times and, um, and all of the focus by Congress on the use of steroids, and injuries related to uh, to uh, performance horses, our business is just really beginning to take off because our our system really offers a training modality that's drug free and that's second to none with regard to conditioning and fitness. But don't you have uh, light air in Colorado? And, and uh, you know, uh, when I played there and I was an athlete, and you play there, uh, it's lighter air and you breathe easier in Colorado than you do, let's say in Florida at, uh, at Gulfstream or someplace, the air is so different. So that's what you're trying to do is to, to train there and, and go to a, another type of climate? Well, actually, Sam, it's actually just a bit the opposite. If you uh, live at sea level, and, you, and if you recall coming up to the mountains, and, of course, we, we see it in the hockey teams coming here and all the sports teams, uh, after exertion, they're usually reaching for the oxygen tank. Um, the fact is is that, you know, there's lesser oxygen in the air, and so what happens is the body is trying to adapt, and, you know, your blood system is, is screaming, saying, hey, wait a second, uh, I'm not capturing as much oxygen as I normally would, I need to do something about that. And so in the case of humans, the body reacts by an increase in hemoglobin so that the actual conveyor belt, if you will, of oxygenation into the muscles and system is actually, if you will, increased or there's just a bigger conveyor belt suddenly over time because your body adapts to it. Well, so, I, know, I know this. Uh, I roomed with a punter. His name was Don Chandler uh, from Oklahoma. Oh, I remember Don. On, yeah, and, and he could put that ball out of sight. Down well, in, let me tell you, my Colorado. golf game is a lot better here than out in Atlanta or elsewhere. Absolutely, the air is lighter, but that doesn't mean it's easier to breathe. Actually, it's just the opposite. Um, it's more difficult to breathe in the sense that you're just getting less oxygen per volume of air. So. 
So it's not that easy to exercise at altitude. The best protocol we found and, and the research has found is if you can take a horse or any athlete and have them rest at altitude, live at altitude, and then have them exert and do their exercise at sea level where their VO2 max and their threshold to exhaustion is extended, that's the ideal combination. Now, we do have athletes exercising at altitude, too, and there is research that supports the benefits of limited exercise at altitude, but very, very limited. Um, but, you know, for horses, the ideal thing would be for that stall to be at 10,000 feet. They're resting in that stall, and then during the day, they're doing their breezing, they're doing their jumps, their workouts. And what's happening is the physiology in that horse is adapting over weeks so that when it comes race time, uh, they're going to feel much stronger uh, and they're going to recover much faster. Well, Steve, uh, you're mentioning the stall. Tell us a little bit about how or, or basically what the horse is doing in the stall and how you operate it. Because reading about it in the Steeplechase Times, I was getting a little queasy thinking of being locked up in an airtight stall and something going wrong. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Well, first of all, the stall is sealed not airtight, but it's sealed relatively tight. For example, normal sliding doors are replaced by a hinge door, and windows are covered with plexiglass and things of that nature. Uh, the system provides a constant flow of fresh air into the stall. It is of lower oxygen content, and that is how we simulate altitude. We don't mess around with barometric pressure. Rather, what we do is through air filtration systems, we actually reduce through a molecular sieve technology the amount of oxygen in the air in the stall. But there's four to 500 liters of air flowing into that stall constantly at all times. It just happens to be at a lesser oxygen level. Um, but inside the stall, it's just business as usual. I mean, the stall, while it's closed up and it's, it's fairly tight, you know, the horse is resting there and go about eating and what have you, and entry and exit into the stall is perfectly normal. Think of it like kind of a heating or air conditioning environment. If you open the stall door when it's at altitude and leave the door open, it's just like heated or cool air will escape. Well, the air, the low oxygen air will escape, and in fact, the stall will start to come down to normal altitude. You close the door, okay. and the low oxygen air continues to build up and so forth. Steve, we're going to have to take a break. Okay. I'm 